Alrighty. Percent proportions. That's so funny. I feel like a podcast. Yeah, for sure. Sure. My game is going live. Here we go. Percent proportions. We use percent pretty much every day in our life. Yeah. If you go to the store and you find a shirt for $19.99 or, and you check out, are you going to check out and pay $19.99? No. No, there's tax. There is tax. Okay, so tax is a percent of what everything you purchase. Um, so, who's watch? Well, it's annoying. It's more annoying than you. All right, stop. Done. Um, so, Louisiana's tax is actually one of the highest state taxes we have. It is at 10.2%. There are some states that have 0%. I looked up last hour. But they are compensating with other things. Like, they have to pay a percent of their car every year. Where if we buy a car, we just have to pay tax on it the time we buy it. They have to pay it every year. So that would be kind of stinky. Did you know it's a big news story right now. Louisiana is the highest per, uh, state tax. One of the highest. But we're the poorest states. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so what's happening is. The reason that is, where do you all the state money go? State money goes to build roads, build schools, pay teachers, pay police officers, pay people that work at the jails. Um, it also goes to people that don't have jobs and are living off the government. So the more... The reason we're so poor, Louisiana has the greatest percentage of people not working well, they out of all the states. Line. So yeah. most, all the people that's working is having their taxes are increasing because we have a lot of people that's not working and we're having to pay for them. So that's why it's not really evening out. They're working on fixing all that. So percents we deal with all the time. So let's get started on our notes here. It says percent application. Percentages can be applied to many everyday situations. You must decode the various terms within the problem in order to understand how to solve the problem. So I have some shopping bags here with some terms. We're going to label each shopping bag below as an increase or a decrease to my original amount. So a tax, is that going to increase or decrease my amount? Decrease. Increase. Increase. We got to, it adds to our bill. A sale price, is that going to increase or decrease? It decreases. It's going to decrease. If it's on sale, it's getting, it's less money. Amount off. It's going to decrease. A tip. It's going to increase my amount. Gratuity. Gratuity is a synonym for tip. So it's going to increase. And a markdown. If something's marked down, it's going to decrease the amount. All righty. So moving on.
The key to solving percent problems in real life is understanding what information you are given and what you are solving for. Number one says, Savannah works as a sales rep and receives $23.80 for every $140 she sells. So y'all see, like, if you go to Dillard's and, like, they have the makeup counters or the perfume or cologne counters, and they're always like, hey, you want to smell this or something? Or you see the people in the middle of the mall and they're like, hey, try our flat iron or try this or something. They're always trying to get you to come over to their that person stand. With the in the mall. Okay. So, um, they're working on commission. What commission means is the more money that they sell in products, they get a percentage of that money. So if you get a percent of that money, that means you want to sell a whole lot, right? So car dealerships, people that work at car dealerships, they want to sell some cars because they make a commission on what they sell. So this is what... Savannah's doing. She's selling stuff. And they said that she's taking home $23.80 for $140 worth of products that she sold. So we need to find the rate or the commission of the commission. A rate is just a percent. So I need to figure out what information is given. I'm still using the percent over 100 equals part over a whole proportion. We're still using that. So what information was given? Did they give me a percent? Yeah. No. They told me to find it. Did they give me a part? Yes. yes. The 2380. Ah, quit messing up. Oh gosh, of course it's going to mess up. Chill out, bro. He's having seizures. <laughs> it says no. Okay, the commission is my part. The total sales is my whole. And it says, what are you solving for? Well, what did the question ask? The rate of commission. The rate of commission, which rate also means what? Percent. So we're looking for the percent of commission. Okay, so I'm using my proportion. They didn't give me a percent, so I'm using a variable. A lot of tests I graded yesterday. Y'all are writing percents over some weird number. Percents are always over 100. So a percent over 100, what is my part in this problem? 2380. What would my whole be? 140. Okay, so I do my normal cross multiplying. I do 100 times 2380 divide by 140. I mean, multiply times 140. So, what percent is commission? 17% is commission. All right, number two reads, 
The shoe department is offering a sale of 15% off all shoes. If Miss Jeffrey saved $12.30, how much were the shoes full price? Oh, sorry, how much were the shoes full price? Okay, so what did they give me of my percent proportion? They gave me a percent of 15, and they gave me a part or a whole? A part. A part. So how much was saved was the part. The percentage of discount is my percent. That's what they gave me. Okay, so what am I solving for? What does the question want? How much were the sh uh, shoes full price? So full price, what is that? A part or a whole? A whole. Okay, I'm using my percent proportion again. Percent over 100 equals part over whole. Did they give me a percent this time? Yes. 15. Oh, percents are always over 100. Equals, did they give me a part? Yes. Yes, that is 1230. And I'm looking for a whole. So I'm going to cross multiply 100 times 1230, divide by 15, and what is the full price of these shoes? $82. I thought I heard somebody say 82 cents. That would be some cheap shoes. $82. Alrighty, so let's go to number three. Diego and his three cousins went on a road trip. They decided to add the cost of their hotel rooms throughout the trip and then split it between themselves. Use the front, oh, Use the chart below to determine the cost of their hotels plus a 7% hotels tax. Then determine how much each cousin owes. Did they add up yet how, all the hotel rooms? No. no. So I need to get what's called a subtotal. Because does this include tax yet? No. They haven't calculated tax yet. So I need to add these three numbers together to get a subtotal. When I add them, I get 256, 256 oh gosh, 56 dollars. So I needed that number to calculate how much tax is going to be charged. I'm still using percent over 100 equals part over whole. Do I know a percent that sells tax? Yes. Yes. Seven is my sales tax. So that's a percent over a hundred equals is this subtotal my part or whole? Whole. Whole. That's sometimes confusing to some people because is that your grand total? No. No, because no, you would have to add tax to it. But right now, this is my total I've got to use to find tax. Of course, while I'm recording. We need all seventh grade talented arts to the bus ramp at this time. 
all seventh grade talented arts to the bus ramp at this time. So 256 is going to be my whole amount. I've got to see what part is how much money for tax. So I'm going to cross multiply here. 7 times 256 divided by 100. And I find that tax is $17.92. Is that what they asked me to find? Yeah. They said determine how much each cousin owes of the final bill. They didn't say find the tax and be done with it. So I'm not done. This is my tax. What do we do with tax? Yes. It adds to the bill. So I have to add it to my subtotal. 1792 is added to my subtotal. I get 273.92. That's their grand total. Does that answer the question? Determine how much each cousin owes. No, they're splitting it. That's the grand total. They still have to split it. That's the problem. That's keeping you from being a mastery and an advanced student. You you're too lazy to go back and read the last question. Y'all, many of you would have stopped there if you even have done that part. Reread the last question. So I have to divide this amongst all the people. Well, he had three cousins. Am I dividing by three? Four. Why four? Because three plus Diego is four. Three cousins plus Diego is four people. I'm dividing by four. When I divide by four, each person has to pay 68.48 for their part of the hotel room. Flipping to the back. It says Anderson's Art Supply Store has created a price list. Look over the price list and answer the questions below. All right, so they got some materials here and their prices. Number four says a customer comes in looking for items to get started painting. Ariana offers her a paint palette, a paint brush, and a sketchbook. She tells the customer that if she buys all three, she'll give her a 15% discount. Approximately, how much will the customer save? Okay, so there's three items. Do I know a total amount yet for the three items if she buys them? No. No. So let's add the three items. I need a paint palette, I need a paint brush, and a sketchbook. When I add them together, I should get Is that including her discount? No. No. So I need to figure up how much she's going to save. I'm using my percent proportion. Did they give me a percentage? Yes. Fifteen percent over percents are always over a hundred. Okay, is fifty sixty two part or all? All. All. She's buying. I've got to ha figure out how much money she's saving. This is what the percent proportion will do. So I cross multiply, divide by 100. And 
I find that $7.59. It is $7.59. Does it give you three decimals? Yes. Five, nine, what? Five, nine, three. It gets five, nine, three. How many decimals are in money? Two. Two. So does this three round the nine up or does it leave it alone? It leaves it alone. So we drop the three. So the discount amount, the amount of money she's saving is $7.59. That's all they were asking for. Then number five says, how much will her total bill be not including tax? Well, what was her subtotal? $50.62. What am I doing with this how, of how much she saves? Am I gonna add it to her bill or subtract it to her bill? If she's saving that amount, She's saving that amount, it gets subtracted off. So before taxes is charged, so I get $43.03 would be her amount with the discount. Alrighty. Let's go to number six. Six says, part of Ariana's earnings are based on a 5% commission rate. At the end of the day, Ariana earned $14.98 in commission. How much did Ariana sell that day? So the, they want to know how much money in products she sold. So I'm using my same formula. Percent over 100 equals part over a whole. Did it, was I given a percent? Yes. Yes, what was it? Five. Five over, percents are always over 100. Now is 14.98 my part or is that my whole? Part. It's the part. I've got to find the whole amount that she sold. So I'm going to cross multiply 14.98 times 100, divide by 5. 298.6. And the calculator gives me 299.6. Is that 6 cents or 60 cents? 60 cents. If it was six cents, I better have a zero in my front. So it is 60 cents. A zero can go behind it. I can't put a zero in front of it. So the amount of product she sold was $299.60. Okay, number seven. Mr. Jameson, an art teacher, would like to purchase enough supplies to get the class stocked. He picks up eight dozen sketch pens, six dozen colored pencils, and three dozen art gum erasers. If the sales tax is 8%, approximately what will his bill be? All right. Do I know a subtotal of what he wants to purchase? Yes. No. 
sketch pencils. He wants eight dozen. Do they come in packs of dozens? Eight times twelve. Sketch pencils come in packs of a dozen. So he needs eight of those. Six packs of colored pencils and three packs of erasers. Miss Adam. Yes. Hey, can you pick up? Yes. So I need to calculate eight sets of sketch pencils because they come in dozens. So how much would eight times the pencil be? Eight times the pencils is 788. I should get 3680, I believe. Eight times the sketch pencils. Oh, yeah. Okay, eight times the 460. 3680. Okay, then six times the colored pencils, which is 788. That gives me 4728. Then three times the erasers should give me. 1962, which gives me a subtotal of these three amounts added up. One hundred and thirty-two thousand three hundred and seventy. That's my subtotal. I still have to figure out how much his final bill is going to be with the tax rate. Do I know how much money is going to be charged for tax? No, I know how much rate it is. What rate is tax? What percent? Eight. Eight over a hundred equals. Is this one o three seventy going to be my part or whole? Oh. It's my whole. I'm finding what part is tax money. So I'd multiply eight times one o three seventy divide by a hundred. And I find that the tax but it, the calculator says eight twenty nine five, right? Six. 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 So I know money is two decimals. This six is gonna round the nine up to a ten, which makes this a eight dollars and thirty cents. So tax is $8.30. Am I done with the problem? No. no. It says what will his bill be? So what do I need to do now? Add. I got to add my subtotal with my tax to get his grand amount that he's going to pay. And he's going to be paying $112 evenly, right? Yep. Very good. Alrighty, I'm going to stop at that problem. Your homework sheet, homework four, you have a column of proportions that you have to set up. Then you have a work column. So I'm looking for your proportions set up in one of those columns. Then final answers in the other column. So you can get started on that.